welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're going to look at the work of Scandian Oncology, a Danish biotech which focuses on developing add-on oral therapies to overcome chemotherapy resistance. And with me is their CEO, Bo Road Hansen. Bo, and we're delighted to have you with us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, tell me a bit about what you do and your uh, lead asset, SCO 101. Yeah, Scandian Oncology is, as you said, a biotech company focusing on overcoming a huge problem with uh, chemotherapy resistance and resistance towards anti-cancer agents. We have our lead uh, candidate, SCO 101, which is the first in class uh, drug, drug in development. It's a small molecule with a unique mode of action, which is actually a dual mode of action. It targets uh, a mechanism, a pump in the cancer cell that is responsible for actually pumping out uh, effective uh, chemotherapy. And it also attacks an enzyme called UGT1A1 in the liver that metabolizes uh, the chemotherapy. And by attacking these two points, we have a double effect on actually increasing the exposure of chemotherapy to patients that have become resistant to the chemotherapy and also taking off the breaks from the resistance in the cancer cells. And this we're currently developing in, um, in clinical trials. We are testing this in a phase two trial in uh, metastatic colorectal cancer patients and also in a phase 1B trial where we are testing it together with standard of care in first line in metastatic pancreatic cancer. So this is very important in oncology treatment because it means that you can carry on giving an effective treatment and you're not having presumably to escalate dose in order to get the same effect. And escalating dose, of course, carries lots of side effects. Yes, actually, on the contrary, in our, in our most advanced trial, the phase two trial that we call CORIST, um, in CORIST, we are actually reducing the dose, we are halving the dose of, uh, of the chemotherapeutic and uh, bringing patients that have progressed in sort of in last line fr from uh, the treatment with the chemotherapeutic back on trial at half the dose together with SCO 101. So we are not increasing the side effects, but we at the same time increasing the exposure to their tumors and, um, and thereby hopefully bringing them back into therapeutic range. Now you mentioned the CORIS study there. Uh, I know that you've got a biomarker for the uh, SCO 101 treatment. Tell me a bit more about that and what it means. Yes, I mean, <laughs> alongside with developing SEO 101, we are also focusing on, um, on biomarker development. And uh, this is, of course, important in order to give this an element of uh, precision, giving most benefit to the patients uh, by selecting the right patients for the therapy. What we realized in the first part of our co-risk study was that um, metastatic colorectal cancer patients um, that come on trial and have a wild type RAS oncogene profile. So the tumors can be segmented between wild type and mutated RAS. The ones that had a wild type profile seem to benefit by staying longer on trial from the given, um, the given combination at the dose we were giving. So we focused the trial in the effect arm that we are doing right now, um, to actually uh, focus on the wild type uh, patients or the RAS wild type patients. Now on your uh, website, you say that the market for Scandian Oncology's products is 4 billion euros. How do you arrive at that number? I mean, I know that the problem of chemotherapy resistance is a very, very big problem in oncology, but nevertheless, how do you do your sums there? Yeah, I mean, first of all, um, unfortunately, there are um, a lot of casualties, about 10 million annually due to, uh, due to cancer. Uh, it's estimated that about 90% of those are linked to resistance towards the existing uh, anti-cancer agents. Chemotherapy 
is a huge market. And again, unfortunately, it's on the it's on the incline, it's increasing. It's um, it's currently about uh, 37 billion US dollars annually used on on different chemotherapeutics, and this is expected to increase by 12 percent over the next uh, five years. We are tapping into that existing market of uh, anti-cancer agents. And the way we have looked at this, and, and um, this is, we are currently focusing on um, third line failure patients, but I have a strategy to move our metastatic colorectal cancer treatment into uh, second line therapy. And that's together with third line constituting about half of the, of, the, of the market there. Then we have our second trial focusing on metastatic or inoperable uh, pancreatic cancer. And there we are combining with standard of care, NAP, Paclitaxel, and Gymcitabin. In those two trials, they're both in both of them an element of platform. So in the first trial, we combine with uh, Folfiri containing irinotecan. And we have mechanistic data from patients showing that there we can increase the exposure of the effective agent in the renotecan to the, to, the, to the tumors. This allows us also to go into other cancers, potentially where a renotecan could play a role, likewise with the taxanes in the second trial. And then finally, we have some uh, very encouraging data from preclinical models in immuno-oncology. In immuno-oncology, chemotherapy is increasingly being used. As an example, um, Opdivo has approved uh, their therapy uh, or PMS therapy together with an, a chemotherapy uh, agent uh, in order to increase efficacy. And there we see also a potential. So the 4 um, billion euro market that we are estimating has uh, elements of that. And it's actually a conservative uh, statement from, from the uh, compiled analysis of, uh, of all those fact factors I just mentioned. And presumably, if actually uh, your product it does enable lower doses uh, to be given, that will be attractive uh, to payers as, uh, as well. Uh, yes, that together with the use of, um, of the right biomarkers will allow us to actually uh, aim for, um, for premium pricing according to our initial dialogue with payers. Okay, so let's turn now your, your phase two trials. Um, let's assume that there's going to be a positive result uh, uh, from them. How do you think you're going to go about the execution of phase three trials and how are you going to fund those trials? Yeah, a very good question. Our plans is that currently we are completing uh, the second part of, uh, of, of CORIST leading up to uh, hopefully a proof of concept in uh, second to third quarter of this year. Now, with that data, we will guide the, the further development. Our plans are to um, prepare studies that can position us for a pivotal trial, taking this new regimen uh, of um, SEO 101 together with uh, fall theory and uh, an antibody into second line. So that's how we see the pivotal uh, development strategy. Now, how do we fund that? Um, we uh, see a couple of uh, possibilities here. We are evaluating whether we should uh, do this potentially with um, in partnership with um, a positioned or established player in, 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 in the area. Um, or we have also um, a scenario where we could um, use financial instruments to actually conduct this um, pivotal uh, part of uh, the development, all leading up to um, a marketed uh, product at which stage our commercialization strategy is to partner uh, in all respects. Now, chemotherapy resistance is your, your, your main focus, but I know that you're also interested in immuno-oncology. Where does that fit into your development plans? So the immuno-oncology aspect is an interesting one, as I, um, as I just briefly alluded to. Um, we have data from um, models of resistant cancer where we can see a very good effect when we combine SEO 101 with uh, immunotherapy agents and chemotherapy, the chemotherapy that the, that the model is resistant towards. And uh, this has encouraged us to actually um, 
put more attention into to that area. And there we have a number of established players that are already in the market with uh, immunotherapy agents. And we see a potential to explore whether there could be um, a path for uh, developing uh, SEO 101 together with uh, Irinotekin and an immunotherapy. And this we are um, fully committed to uh, e explore and exploit uh, further in the, in the years to come. Um, it fits with this trend of, of, of multiple treatments for, for a cancer. It's funny, it's turning the wheel back, isn't it, almost to the beginning of cancer treatments rather yeah. than a single agent have multiple agents. Now, you possess a large IP estate on your assets. Uh, can you tell investors a bit more about that? Yeah, our IP uh, estate, we believe, is uh, has the right size to actually protect SCO 101 and the the pipeline that we have behind, uh, the preclinical pipeline that we have behind that I haven't spoke, spoken to. It's, um, it's long-term. We have very good protection around the combinations of SEO 101 with the relevant uh, chemotherapies. And um, it's strengthening um, our portfolio. And uh, you can say that uh, we are focusing on an IP strategy, which gives them, you know, you say the maximum uh, cost benefit in, in, in that regard. So on, on all the accounts, uh, our IP is, um, is extending the protect, protection uh, into the late 2030s or into the 2040s uh, as such. So this is uh, something that has uh, our focus and we are generally very well protected and covered by IP. Now to conclude, and very briefly, if you would, Bo, uh, what should investors look out for in the upcoming months? Yes, we have uh, we have a couple of very interesting uh, near term inflection points for uh, for Scandian oncology. Both our clinical trials, CoRISD and Pantax, are set to have readout in uh, Q two Q three of twenty twenty two, so this year. And in CoRISD, it's the proof of concept we are targeting in a phase two. In Pantax, it's the broader perspective of saying this works across several uh, chemotherapeutics, not only the one in co-risk, but also in, um, with, 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 with others in the dose escalation study that uh, is reading out in, uh, in the same time frame. So we have these two uh, clear shots on goal. And then uh, to follow uh, our development in terms of the immuno-oncology area. So, Bo Rodhansen, a very important year for Scandian uh, coming up and such an important and neglected area that you're, uh, you're focusing on. So thank you so much for talking to us. Absolutely. A pleasure. And thank you.